I can still remember when I got my Xbox right when it was released. I can remember just kind of waiting for good games to come out. I mean, don't get me wrong, there were good games here and there, but a lot of them just seemed like budget titles. Maximum Chase is one of those games, but I can remember being extremely hyped for this game. It reminded me of the Runabout series as well as the Driver games, and that looked promising to me. So I bought this game the day it was released, and needless to say, I was a little bit disappointed. But it's not a horrible game, it just didn't live up to my expectations. And uh, let's find out why. The game was developed by Genki. They were probably best known for creating the Tokyo Extreme Racer series, as well as Daytona USA 2001. So they should know racing games, but for some reason the gameplay doesn't really feel all that polished here. It's not bad, I've played a lot worse, but it just doesn't flow well. And by that I mean whenever you hit something you tend to come to a sudden stop, which slows the fast pace down way too much. The cars also get a bit squirrely here and there, which can make them hard to control at times, but for the most part it's not too hard to get the job done. So let's get into why you're actually racing through the city of Los Angeles at breakneck speeds. You play a police officer that runs into a scared woman who has a criminal organization chasing her. Actually, she just kind of jumps into your car and tells you to drive. All of this is explained with live action cutscenes complete with green screen backgrounds and horrible acting. And these can only be skipped if you are replaying a level you have yet to complete. So, if you want to play through each level one by one, you have to sit through all of these. You got wheels? Uh, yeah! Yeah! Out back! The repairs are on your tab, Rick! Oh. Each level contains a racing portion as well as a shooting portion. The shooting levels are kind of like Time Crisis or Virtual Cop, but on wheels. And these are pretty fun, but you'll find yourself mashing the shoot button until your thumb falls off. There are also boss battles at the end of these shooting stages, and these are the toughest part of the game as they should be. But God forbid you take more than a little bit of damage during the level because you'll need almost full health to beat most of these bosses as their attacks are very powerful. My biggest complaint would be the cursor speed on screen. It moves a little bit slow for my liking. One of the selling points of this game for me was the licensed vehicles in the game. You'll get to man quite a few different cars, including a Camaro, Corvette, and even a Chevy S10 truck. I like the variety of vehicles, going from a bad muscle car to a compact pickup. And you'll also be chased by Cadillacs, Chevy vans, and Hummers. Each vehicle has its own attributes like speed, handling, and durability. The game takes place throughout the greater Los Angeles area, and the level designs are pretty detailed. There are times in each level, though, when I'm not quite sure which way to go. They tried to make the stage designs feel branched out a bit, but ultimately it just causes more confusion than is necessary. But these levels look really nice, and that has a lot to do with the graphics. The Xbox was a powerful machine, and this led to some really great looking games. And even though the Xbox was powerful, it didn't stop this game from experiencing massive amounts of slowdown. Now, it doesn't happen all of the time, but when it does, it's more than noticeable. The music here sounds like it was plucked straight from an action movie, and that's fantastic. It fits what the game does perfectly. And same can be said about the sound effects. In fact, if you were sitting in a room where somebody was playing this game and you weren't really paying attention, you'd probably think they were just watching like a Lethal Weapon movie or something along the sorts. 
That is, if the in-game characters aren't spouting out their cheesy, repetitive banter. Watch me now. Watch me now. There's not a whole lot of replay value to this game. There's one play mode, the levels are on the shorter side, and a lot of the time you're stuck watching cutscenes. And the story is definitely cheesy. I'm not even going to go into it, you'll have to check it out for yourself. Like I said earlier, this isn't a horrible game, it's just not a very good game. But at about two bucks used and ten bucks brand spanking new, it's definitely a cheap game and for the price it's worth a look just don't expect too much out of this one an accident not at it time to fly 